Your Royal Highness Princess Benedicte, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Ness, for your very kind introduction. I'm sure I'm not the only dementia friend here gathered tonight. I'm very honored and very happy to be here today and also to be a part of welcoming you all to Copenhagen. This is the 26th time Alzheimer Europe organizes and hosts a conference that ch challenge the face regarding dementia. And I think we all owe you, Alzheimer Europe, a big thank you for your efforts in drawing attention to the challenges of this terrible disease. You have all these years persistently drawn our attention to these challenges. You have created a clear vision for dementia-friendly Europe. You have been a front runner in putting the issue on dementia and the political agenda in order to help people with dementia and their relatives. Thank you for that. Today we can see that your efforts has not been in vain. Fighting dementia is not only a political issue. Fighting dementia is about starting a movement, a movement towards a more friendly Europe, dementia-friendly Europe, where the public is better informed about dementia, where there's more understanding and less stigma, and where people are better helped to take action. A movement that Alzheimer Europe has helped start and uphold to your vision. It is a direct result of your movement and many others that today we can see more than 1.5 million registered dementia friends in UK alone not to speak of all the dementia friends gathered here in this very room this evening. I also regard myself as a dementia friend. As a Minister for Health and for Elderly, I made it a key priority to do what I can to fight dementia and bring dementia on the top of the political agenda. And that is why I, a few weeks ago, launched a new national action plan for dementia in Denmark. I believe it's a visionary action plan, inspired by the best practice nationally and abroad, inspired by people with dementia and their families, and with a financing of 470 million Danish kroner, or over 60 million euro, it is also an ambitious plan that should lead to concrete improvements for all people affected by dementia in their daily lives. It is my hope that the new National Action Plan on Dementia can serve and as an inspiration for other countries as well. When you want to make a difference and make a National Action Plan on Dementia, the most important part is really to see what action is needed. That is why I made it a point out to, to go out, visit the real world at nursing homes, clinics, hospitals in Denmark and abroad. At first, I think the officials in the ministry thought I was joking when I told them about my plans to travel all around the country. After all, they could just have invited a few experts to tell me what to do or have written me some memos. That's what they do every day. But I insisted that two key words should guide our work with a new national action plan on dementia. Dialogue and involvement. I wanted this action plan to be a joint effort, a plan made in close cooperation with the people who are affected by dementia every single day, and a plan that builds upon all good examples in dementia treatment and care from Denmark and from other countries, so during the past 12 months, I have traveled around Denmark and visited around 35 municipalities. And I have also had the privilege of traveling abroad to Netherlands, UK, Norway, and Sweden, where I was inspired by their great efforts. Through my visits and talks, I have learned, I have listened, and I have collected a great amount of valuable inputs. Inputs from people with, who involuntarily have become everyday experts in dementia, and the care systems and the healthcare professionals who every day makes a huge difference 
for the people suffering from dementia. I was especially inspired by the UK, which has made a great effort in setting ambitious political targets. Targets that are systematically follow up by data on how every region in the country performs. I'm impressed and inspired by the way the UK works at the national level to improve lives for people with dementia and their families. For example, I visited dementia-friendly hospitals in Manchester, and I had the pleasure to see how civil society, for example, supermarkets and public associations, contribute to a more dementia-friendly society. Just to give you a little example, in UK, I met with this young woman with dementia. Her name was, is Joy. Joy mentioned she was challenged when she went shopping in the local supermarket. She was stressed out by busy people who lost their patience with her when they queued up in line to pay their, for their groceries. Therefore, Joy contacted the director of the supermarket and they made a slow line for persons like Joy. And actually, it became a very popular line among all other customers as well. <laughs> and this is just a little example who shows um, how much a small change can make a huge difference for other persons. In Norway, I was impressed by the daily activities for people with dementia. I visited a farm outside Oslo where people with dementia who are still living at home came every week. They helped at the farm with different tasks. They took care of the horses and they helped at the farm. They cooked for each other and they felt they did something meaningful. Meanwhile, their hardworking relatives could have a break, a real break knowing that their loved ones are having a great time. And in Sweden, I was very impressed by the Sylvia home, where the Queen herself had put quality and dementia care and competences high on the agenda. The Queen has established an outstanding education program for carers, nurses, and doctors. People are proud to attend the program, and they are proud to receive the Sylvia needle by the Queen herself when they finish their education. This example from Sweden, I think, is something we all can learn from. Added to all these important inputs is also dementia report made by the Danish Health Authority. This report has been prepared by a wide range of central dementia stakeholders in Denmark, including experts, interest groups, organizations for relatives, and professional organizations. And I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the Danish Alzheimer Association, who made a very significant contribution to this work. And also a thank to all other organizations who have given their time and their input in the process. Many of the stakeholders were also invited to a Dementia Summit hosted by the Danish Prime Minister and I back in May 2016. Together, we placed dementia on the top of the political agenda in Denmark exactly as it should be. All this work resulted in the Danish government's initiative to a new national action plan on dementia. In the plan, we recommend three national objectives for the dementia efforts towards 2025. First of all, we will strive towards ensuring that all 98 municipalities in Denmark are dementia friendly, because it has to be easier and safer for people with dementia and their relatives to live with a dementia disease in Denmark. One of the relatives I have met expressed the problem this way. Sometimes when we meet someone we know, they cross the street in order to avoid us. We feel sorry for them. We know they do it because they don't know what to do or what to say. Well, I want to fight this stigmatization. I will, as Minister for Health and El Elderly, take the leading role at a national partnership regarding a dementia-friendly Denmark. And at the same time, we want to establish 
local partnerships so we also locally can strengthen close cooperation on developing a dementia-friendly society. Secondly, we want to ensure that more people with dementia are diagnosed and that 80% will have a specific uh, dementia diagnosis. If you don't know the right diagnosis, you can't get exactly the care and support that works best for you. Thirdly, we suggest that the consumption of antipsychotic medication among people with dementia should be reduced by 50% towards 2025. It is not easy, but I know that we can do it. The three objectives, of course, cannot stand alone. They are followed up by 27 specific efforts spread out on five challenges when it comes to dementia, challenges in regards to diagnosis, quality of care, support of relatives, houses, and knowledge and research. Challenges that many of you probably recognize from your own countries. You could say that one of our main priorities is to rethink the whole organization of dementia diagnosis to ensure a higher quality and a more cross-disciplinary approach. <coughs> Another main priority is to improve the quality in nursing, caregiving, and rehabilitation. We want to prioritize a very large portion of the resources to give the caregivers at nursing homes and hospitals better training and better skills to improve, uh, to improve care. Finally, a main priority is to improve the support and counseling for relatives to people with dementia. Many families make a huge effort in supporting their ill spouse or parent every day. Now it's about time that we support them. With the initiatives, in this action plan, we will make a real difference for the relatives in their everyday life. That is what it's all about. To make a concrete difference for people with dementia and their families. It is my ambition that the National Action Plan on Dementia will contribute to making Denmark a more dementia-friendly society. We have been inspired by countries abroad and hopefully we in turn can stand out as an example for other countries. By standing together, we can contribute to fulfilling Alzheimer Europe's vision of dementia-friendly Europe. And this is an ambition that I think all of us gathered here this evening, we all share. Because I think we all regard ourselves as true dementia friends. But I also well aware that the work doesn't stop here. In fact, it has only just begun. We each need to do our bit to achieve this goal. As dementia friends and volunteers, as responsible authorities and politicians, or as experts. And with these words, I wish you all a good and successful conference. <laughs>